those platforms now. All right, so let me just look. I apologize, I know some of you guys say, yeah, I've been sitting here for a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're all on. So if it doesn't connect somehow, it's already on Facebook and YouTube side. All right, let's focus. So again, when you say you want to fly in the inner worlds, it's essentially the spiritual self, the soul, experiencing its true nature while you're still in the body. Because right now, you have a physical body, you have emotions, and you have thoughts, right? So at any given time, you're putting your attention on things that are material. So when you do your meditation and spiritual practice, you want to experience what is beyond the physical, emotional, mental world. Make sense? It's just like going from AM to FM and higher and higher. So when a person says, oh, I want to experience like I'm flying, I'm floating, all you're doing, you're still in your physical body, but part of your consciousness is not in the physical body. See, what people don't realize, you can be many places at the same time. You are actually in many places at the same time. In the physical realm, the emotional realm, and the mental realm. Okay? Now, to repeat what we said earlier, to experience this expansion, there are specific steps the soul has to go through to experience this expansion. So from chaos of doing so many things, putting your attention, these thoughts and emotions, because all of us are walking in a cloud, from that chaos, he has to go into a certain calmness. From that calmness, he has to go into a silence, which manifests as inner peace. But that's not the end objective. That's just one of the stepping stones. So from inner peace and silence, it moves to stillness. And you go, yeah, man, stillness, I got there. Nope, you might have gotten there, but that's not the end result. That's just one of the higher steps to go even higher. So from chaos to calmness to silence or inner peace to stillness, that's when you're in a platform to experience expansion. You need so far? So unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to go to do that work or they're not aware there's such a thing. So they want to jump. So they, when they take substances, they're actually tearing up certain portions of the energy field. In this case, the chakra web behind the chakra, which is, imagine this is your... Okay. Imagine this is your chakra. Behind it, behind every chakra, is like an energy mesh. That energy mesh, or chakra web, is what protects us from what's floating around in the energy world. So when you go to a room and you go, man, this place feels heavy. What's happening is this negative clouds of thoughts and emotions from yourself or other people is pressing against it. They say, you go, oh, I don't feel so good, right? But it's still there to protect you. Now, when you take these substances, so shoot them, drink them, smoke them, whatever you do, you're going like this. <clears throat> so suddenly, oh, I experience the energy world. Yeah, you do. The only problem is, uh, now that you ripped it open, can you close it when you need to? We need it to protect you. It's just like, oh man, I want to see all the scene. You know this screen door? It kind of, I cannot see clear. So you, what you do? Instead of slowly opening your screen door, you take an axe and you chop it open. Oh, I see clearly. Then you go, okay, I'm done. Uh, but I don't want the bugs to come in. Now what? Too late. So when you do it the proper way of Meditation, spiritual practice, which might be slower, it's just like you're learning to open the door, close it, open the door, close it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I apologize if you feel like I'm repeating myself because earlier the people didn't get it because of the technical issues. Lucky for you, this technology, if any of you have experienced that already because you didn't know any better or at that time you just thought, you know, I just want to try it and you're having certain negative effects, go find someone who has... Uh, a certified pranic healer in your area, and they will use pranic psychotherapy using electric violet, and it sews it up, you know, completely. Of course, you have to give it time to become permanent. Now, let's go back to the lesson. 
So why can't the person experience calmness? Remember, from chaos to calmness, it's because of the clouds and thoughts and emotions. And so as you do your meditation and spiritual practice, as the spiritual energy comes down and cleanses this, disintegrates it, you go, oh man, it's calmer. But you still send some emotion, some thoughts. And at some point, as you go deeper in meditation, you go, ooh, empty, no thoughts, no emotions. Aha, uh -huh. then you experience silence. So that silence oftentimes looked at as inner peace. Now, most people, they get there. They're like, hallelujah, I'm here. Nope, that's just one of the stepping stones. Because beyond inner peace, even peace has different levels. It's just like you go outside. Let's say there's, there's cars going by, maybe two or three cars going by, compared to rush hour, you go, wow, it's quieter. Then... One or two cars go by every 20 minutes, it's even quieter. Then there are no cars, it's quieter, right? And you go, yeah, it's perfect. Not really, you know why? It's not completely quiet. Some of you could still hear the wind hitting the trees. Okay, okay, but that's different. Okay, I'm mean, looking at degrees here. Oh, it's really quiet. I don't, there's, you can't even hear anything. So quiet. Then at a far, far distance, you may hear some cars from, I don't know, several miles away. There's some noise. Okay, that's quieter. You know, it's relative. Make sense? Now, if you suddenly put headphones on, it's quieter. Noise-canceling headphones, man, there's absolutely no sound. So, you notice your idea of quiet is relative. Same thing with peace. For ordinary people, no fights at home, no fights at work, that's peace. <laughs> True? Some people say, that's not peace, that's just less conflict. Okay then. Then you go, yeah, when I go up to the mountains by myself, it's peace. Okay, you're getting somewhere. Because there's less thought forms there. Then at that point, it's very peaceful. It's very quiet. Then you start noticing that now I can feel my anxiety, my stress coming to the surface. There's no inner peace. Then somehow you do some form of meditation, you do something, you watch it, it dissipates, you go, oh, it's very peaceful. See what I'm saying? So different, even peace, there are different levels of it. Now watch this. From chaos to calmness, from calmness to peace or silence, as you go deeper in that peace and silence, you start noticing not only are there no thoughts or emo no emotions, it's just like blank. Like blank. Like nothing's moving. Not even your thoughts. Then you're experiencing a glimpse of, a glimpse of stillness. Now, even that stillness has different levels. So, the interesting thing about this, which very, people know, very few people know, of course, the great teachers know about this, as you experience that inner stillness, you start noticing it's still, but you can sense as if you're floating. There is the start of expansion. So when people say, oh yeah, I feel like I'm flying, like I'm dreaming, right? They're getting a glimpse of that. Now here's the great news. You can meditate and study for years and years and years, and which people do, and it works. You go to a monastery, a convent, or some spiritual place, and just completely devote your time to getting to that stillness. You can. Lucky for you, because of these teachings not being kept in the monastery, it's actually being shared. Like one of them, my teacher, Grandmaster Tsokoksu, teaches about proper meditation. When we do meditation twin hearts, we bless the earth, right? Or when you do the great invocation, we bless the earth. We allow ourselves to be instruments and channels to bless the earth with peace, with love, with light, all the good energies. So as that energy flows through us, guess what happens? It disintegrates a lot of these clouds of thoughts and emotions. So from chaos, you start noticing it's calmer. And as you keep blessing the earth, 
after we finish blessing the earth from the heart and the crown, you go, and then remember I have you put your hands down. Wow, it's very quiet. And then when I had you visualize a golden flame, a golden light, what do you notice? Wow, it feels very, very quiet, and it's very, very still. Like absolutely no thoughts and feelings. Like just quiet, but I'm still aware. At that point, you reach stillness. So when you listen to me or, you know, when you get the audio recording with my teacher chanting Om or Om Mani Padme Om or any of these mantras, you start feeling like the chant is almost like it's pulling me through my head. So what you're experiencing is expansion. All that in less than 20 minutes. That's it. So how long you want to stay up there is dependent on many factors. Some people, yeah, I did that. I experienced that expansion. Then after a while, I feel like I've been pulled down again. All right. There's not a place for it. I'll just give you a few hints. What are the things that prevent us from staying expanded? Number one. Those clouds and thoughts and emotions. You go, well, but I cleaned it already when I meditated. Uh, did you create any new ones afterwards? That's one. Did you have any in your closet that came to the surface? Exactly. So you don't just do it once and expect you be all this completely removed. Second reason. In addition to these clouds and thoughts and emotions, the soul has certain attachments to money. To, be, to belongings, to material things, to recognition, to sex, to fame. All those are tendencies that the soul wants to grab a hold, to, to grab onto. They're called attachments. That's why the Lord Buddha said, you know, the cause of all suffering is attachments. Now, you have to understand it in proper order. It's not wrong to have attachments because in order to experience something you have to attach to it we'll cover this uh earlier part next year when we teach inner teachings of buddhism revealed again online okay watch you say i don't want to have any attachments if i don't have any attachment to water or this cup uh, my body will stay thirsty isn't it so the secret is as simple as this my body needs this water i attach to it to the notion of having it experiencing it, when I'm done, I deattach. It's that simple. It's the problem is not attachment. The problem is the inability to deattach once you're done. That's why some people, they don't understand. They go, oh yeah, I want to be a saint. I'm going to live in a mountain, nothing to eat, nothing to drink, nothing because I want to be a saint. No, how are you about to live? The key is to attach and deattach. Since most people are not aware of it, or the tendency of attachment is so strong, that prevents them from having the silence and the peace. Because the minute they sit down, they go, okay, I'm going to be quiet for a prolonged amount of time. But I got to do this. I got to go make money. I got to do this. I got to do that. All those attachments, those thought forms are pulling on the soul. But once you understand, and as you meditate, you go, oh, these are thoughts and emotions I created, but they're not me. So what happens, those thoughts and emotions of money, of sex, of fame, or anything else, they lose control over you. So they don't pull you down anymore. Otherwise, you go, yeah, man, it's the best meditation I've ever done. And a few seconds later, yeah, boof, crash landing. Sounds familiar? That's why. So with proper understanding and meditation, you're able to deattach. Make sense? So if somebody tells you you cannot be attached to, attached to anything, ignore them. They don't know what they're talking about. It's impossible while you're having a physical form because you need to interact. Every time you interact with people, with anything around you, you're attaching. True? Because when you say absolutely no attachment... That means you cannot even love someone. 
See what I mean? <laughs> the key is to understand. You go watch a movie. Oh, man, this is the best movie in the world. I love it. I enjoy it. You leave the place. You might talk to your friends about it. You talk to people around. Uh, but an hour later, okay, I need to attend to something else. You know what you just did? You just detach. Unless you're one of the group of people who watched the movie Avatar the first time and they feel so attached to the movie that they're actually, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, support groups for people who watch Avatar because they got so attached to that notion of that perfect place. When they leave, they attach it. They cannot detach to function their everyday life. Those thought forms were so strong, they were attached to their chakras. So the secret, listen, enjoy it, detach from it. Enjoy good food, good friends, whatever it is, enjoy it and detach. That is what allows you to go from chaos to calmness. From calmness, you need to get to stillness. So from stillness, when you experience seeing that stillness, you need to go higher. Stillness is not the objective. It's just a stepping stone into expansion to the higher worlds. That's that. The concept is easy. It's the practice that takes work. Now, the easiest way to understand it is something like this. The way my teacher, Grandmaster Sokoso, explained it, he said, the soul is like a hot air balloon. A hot air balloon, in order to take off, you need to first remove what ties it down. These are the attachments. Make sense? So you have to learn to deattach, at least temporarily. And then, as you're going up, you go to a certain height, you go, I can't go any higher. Oh, there's too much weight inside the basket. You throw things out. As you throw things out, you're able to go higher. And then if you want to go higher, you increase the fire so more heat goes up. That's the kundalini energy. That's for another time. So what we're throwing out are our character defects, which includes greed, attachments, obsessions, thoughts, emotions that we cannot let go of. Those are the things you throw out in order for you to go higher. So that's why I was thinking, what should I title this talk tonight? Oh, very simple. I want to fly. What's holding me down? Many things. But here's the best news of all. Once you understand it, you recognize it. Now, for some of you who are having challenges or difficulty detaching, there are many ways to do it. One of the ways to do it is understanding. That's more permanent. You go, I'm really attached to this food. I'm really attached to this, to this. So you go, hmm. I realize there's too much of an attachment. So you can use energy, you say, cut and disconnect. That's the first part. The second part is to understand what its purpose. Once you understand, ah, this attachment to my parents, to my children, to money, to this, these are all important because it allows me to function as a human being. So I will enjoy it, I will use it, but once it's dragging me down, I detach. After all, the emotions and the thoughts by itself of attachment is something I created. I know some of you go, but that's too mental. That's one way. That's one way, not the only way. This is for people who are very, very mental. By using your mind, you understand things, the emotions calm down. The other way is when you do your meditations, you focus on opening your heart, your crown, as you bless the earth. As your heart and your crown becomes more active, more divine energy comes down, it has a cleansing and flushing effect. When you chant Om or any of the mantras and you're practicing stillness, even for those few moments, you're able to experience a certain form of isolation. Isolation from all these thoughts and emotions and attachments. And you suddenly go, wow, it's very quiet and still. Once you're in that state of stillness, 
many of you experience freedom. Now here's the weird part. A lot of you experience freedom simultaneously feeling as if you've gone home or if you've come home. You go, that doesn't make any sense. How could I feel free and feel like I've come home? It's very simple because that's your spiritual home. Your spiritual home is when you realize who you are, what you are, and where you came from. That's it. So we pack a lot of information in, in this session. That was about minus the electronic glitch earlier. That's at least 25 minutes. I highly recommend you rewatch this and take notes. Okay? So we're going to do our meditation now. We'll do the great invocation. You know, we'll alternate. Meditation, Twin Hearts, great invocation to bless the earth. And as we mentioned earlier, when you bless the earth, as you become a channel for these blessings to flow through, it has a cleansing effect. It also awakens the love, the light, and intelligence, uh, life, love, intelligence, and will aspect within the soul, within you. All right, shall we? Let's ask for blessings. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Talk Hoxwee, Mahaguji Mailing, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying, healing light. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, we do the meditations the same way. We always start with affirming who we are. Remember, who are you? What are you? Where did you come from? Very simple sequence. Okay, put your hand like this. Be aware of your crown. I am that. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thoughts. I am the soul. I, the soul, use the body, the emotion, the thoughts to function in this earthly life. I am the soul, the thinker, feeler, and mover. I am that the soul, the spiritual self. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. Even as you do this, the clouds of thoughts and emotions Lose their grip on you, the soul, the spiritual self. Keep affirming who you are. You are a spiritual being, a being of intense light, love, and willpower. That is your true nature. I am that, that I am. Now open your hands in blessing. You say, we are one. Now imagine all of us are brilliant beings of light inside the big bright sun looking out into the solar system. You say we are one. We are one with God's presence on earth. We are one with God's presence in the solar system. We are one with God's presence in the universe. We are one with God. We are one with all. And in this oneness, we humbly ask to be instruments and channel to bless the earth with divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. And so it is. Now imagine collectively projecting a brilliant beam of light from the sun and filling up the entire earth. Let's chant Om three times. Om. 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 From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend on earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. Let just be still. 
From the center, which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out. May it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth. So be it. Now be still and let these blessings flow through us. Bless your home. Bless your workplace, your city, country, bless the entire earth. May all be blessed. Second great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being, let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being, let love descend on earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth now. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth now. So be it. Just be still and let the blessings keep flowing through our entire being. If you know anyone in need, people, friends, loved ones who are going through difficult times, bless them with the intense golden light. May all be blessed. Now, for the third great invocation, we'll raise the frequency a lot more. So just imagine a brilliant, brilliant light like a miniature star floating above your head. Put your entire attention into that light and just say, I am that, that I am. You're that light. So be still and listen. The rest will be done for you. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. Be still. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend on earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. Be still. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. Be still. From the center of which you call the human race, the angelic race, and all the other races, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth now. So be it. Just be still. Blessings be to all. Now lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth and put your entire attention still on that brilliant light. Just be still. We'll raise the frequency even higher. Oh.
let go now. Gently, very slowly, very gently and slowly slide back into your physical body. Gently move your fingers, move your toes. Slowly raise your hands. Visualize the earth in front of you again. Picture all the people you love in front of you. Fill them with beautiful golden light. Let's release the excess energies our bodies cannot absorb. May all be blessed with good health, with much happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. Now be aware of your feet, the base of your spine, put your golden light downwards. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. Continue blessing the earth through your feet, through the sol soles of your feet, the base of your spine, your hand. Just fill the earth below you with golden light. So be it. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. We thank you in full faith. So it is. To my teacher, Master Tokok Sri Mahaguji Mary. Thank you. Okay. Give me some feedback when you can. Again, in, in what do you call this, Instagram, once we finish it, all your comments disappear, so I, I'm not that good. <laughs> I cannot read it at the same time and, and talk. So um, your feedback, let me know how you feel. If you understood it, the sequence, and how many of you experienced the expansion. We add some special sauce in this one, so for some of you who are having some challenges leaving your body, you might have a, might have had a good experience out of your body today. Now, one of the comments I saw earlier, they say, oh, I want to experience that expansion. The problem is they feel like spacey. They're not grounded. That's why you notice after every meditation, what do we do? We focus on the base of the spine, the feet, and the hands. We project golden light down into the earth. What does that do? To ground you. So you can experience expansion simultaneously. You're functional. <laughs> Otherwise, what happens? Some people, they meditate. After meditating, you talk to them, they go, you say, hey, did you do this? They go, wow. <laughs> it's like they're spacing out, right? So the grounding helps when you bless the earth. Then, uh, somebody reminded me about this earlier, so thank you. It's always a good idea to do physical exercises before the meditation and after. You know, just simple exercises, uh, stretching, you know, jumping jacks, whatever, before and after. Before is to prepare your body for deeper meditation, because it kind of loosens things up, opens up a lot of the channels. After the meditation, you want to do physical exercises, so it does two things. It squirts out whatever negative energy your body must have brought to the surface during meditation. It also allows the fresh spiritual energy to be absorbed by your body, so that your body can be healthier. That's it. All right, I apologize. Ooh, it's almost an hour. I know it's a longer session. Um, I hope you got something out of it. I did my best to pour as much information I can so you really understand. You know, when people say expansion of consciousness, enlightenment, there's something like something so far away. You're doing it already. It's just a matter of having the proper sequence, or as Tony Robbins says, the syntax to get there. Uh, speaking of Tony Robbins, tomorrow I travel, the afternoon I travel to Florida for uh, Tony Robbins' Date with Destiny. And uh, so I don't know what between this week and next week, I don't really know when we'll be uh, on Anchor the Light again, but 
I always bring my equipment with me, so I'll do my best to squeeze whatever time I have uh, so we can still have our lessons and sessions. Right? So the ones who are going to be with us at Date with Destiny, it's going to be amazing and powerful. I'm speaking on day five, I believe. That's what he told me. So either way, I'm just very grateful to be there and to be able to contribute to, to all the wonderful people who want to be better and be more effective in serving others. So namaste, everyone. You all take care. And um, God bless. We'll see you in the next Anchor Delight. Bye-bye.